This this isn't on, is it? No. no. Okay. The only uh, y'all remember that time I was yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> and they came in from the other class and said he <laughs> needed to tone his dad a little bit. <laughs> the, the only problem with this camera is that I can't I can't roam no. to and fro. <laughs> Whoa, those their needs are just so many, aren't they? Wow. As, as I was listening, can y'all hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it just reminds me as we list all these needs of how vulnerable we all are. Mm -hmm. It's by the grace of God that some of these needs would be ours. So you never know, do you? Well, I wanted to make a comment about the uh, Food Fund and Fellowship. And we, Miss Jessica has already ordered the food. So, so <laughs> rain or shine, they're going to have the gathering from 4 to 7. So if you want a free dinner, come tonight between 4 and 7. Hopefully, there will be a window of no rain in between that. But it doesn't look too, too promising, does it? Well, the needs are many, aren't they? Excuse me. Is that in the joy house or the gym or where are we going? That's the issue. It's outdoors. <laughs> but we do have a tent. Oh, okay. So if it's raining, you can still eat bounce. underneath the tent. Yeah, you still bounce if you want to. <laughs> 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 <Under> the tent. <laughs> so it's from 4 to 7 is the window. And I uh, yep. I hope I hope people will show up because that, that's a lot of food that we're going to have <laughs> left over. Well, the Psalms, by the way, our text today is Psalm 90. And I was thinking, you know, we could just read, we, we could just read the Psalm and go home. Yeah. It says it all. But here, here, I want to give you a few facts to help us appreciate what the psalmist is writing about. The, this, you know, most of the Psalms are attributed to David. However, this one is attributed to Moses. Uh, some would say Moses, yeah. but some would say they, we don't really know. It really doesn't matter. It's, it's in the scripture, and the reason they, they think it would, might be Moses is that it's consistent with the theology that Moses presented. So what I thought we'd do is uh, read the psalm. It, it's uh, 17 verses, and then we'll make a few comments uh, after that. Listen to God's word today as we read from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Amen? Amen. Amen. From, ever, from everlasting to everlasting. It's a long time. As far as the east is from the west, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. Verse 3. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under the, your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Now that's the truth, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we finish our years with a moan. 
The length of our days is 70 years. If you're over 70, this is a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> or 80 if we have the strength. Yet the span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, O Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the works, the work of our hands. As I sit with folks who are dealing with all kinds of circumstances, I, I find myself uh, reminding myself that the problems that families are dealing with are not my problems. And I find myself reminding myself that the family, the individual, is in the hands of God. And so as I hear stories, it helps give me comfort in recognizing that I can't change their problems, but I can be with them and walk alongside them as they do the best they can with their problems. Does that make sense? So a member had contact, I was, I was in South Carolina this past three days on a John Deere tractor. <laughs> and the house belongs to my wife's family and it was built in the 1860s. Wow. And the house, it's old. It's old. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no central air, no central heat. They do have indoor plumbing. So it takes about seven hours to mow the, the place where I mow and then a couple hours to weed eat. But you know, sitting on that John Deere tractor, you can solve all kinds of problems. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's helpful to me to kind of get my mind and my heart refocused and recentered on the things that really matter. What, when you think about it, what is it that really matters? The psalmist knew that. And the language that he talks about, about uh, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And you know, with all the, the uncertainty of, that's going on with masks and COVID and Haiti and Afghanistan, it's just, it seems like that the, there's a lot of chaos going on. And I find comfort for me personally being reminded of the psalmist. And, and look at verse 3. You turn men back to dust, saying, return to dust, O sons of men. You know, during the season of Lent, 
we often say, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But thanks be to God, the love of the Lord endures forever. Now, whether you get cremated or buried, it really doesn't matter. Now, some people don't want to get cremated because they don't want to burn. <laughs> and my thought is, well, I'm going to be dead. So I'm, I'm for cremation. It, to me, it just makes sense. But some people are adamant that they don't want to, they don't want to be cremated. So, but here's what the psalmist says, that we are all dust. Mm -hmm. And to dust we shall all return. But thanks be to God, the love of the Lord endures forever. The attitude of the psalmist was a, the psalmist was able to look beyond the here and now and to see the bigger picture, the broader perspective. And we tell, we tell people that are dealing with anxiety that when we get anxious, our, our vision tends to hyper-focus. And, and that's all we can see when we get anxious. And sometimes people get panic attacks, and I better not, I better not roam. Uh, <laughs> sometimes people get panic attacks, and they will tell you in the midst of the panic attack that it's not rational, because anxiety is not rational. So when, when a person focuses or hyper-focuses on their trouble, one of the ways that we help them is to help them remove the barriers from their vision so they can see the bigger perspective, the broader panoramic view. Well, look at verse 15. The psalmist says, Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. You know, the scripture says that in this world, in this life, you're going to have trouble. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> but thanks be to God, the love of God, the grace is sufficient, and I'm supposed to preach in, in sometime this fall. And I'll go ahead and tell you what I, my text is going to be. The text that I'm going to preach on is Paul's thorn in the flesh. Because Paul understood trouble. And his prayer was not answered in the way that Paul wanted it to be answered. Have you prayed for something in your life that the answer does not come in the way that you would want it to come. Yeah. yeah. Not that it not that it would uh, not that it was an answer, but it just was not answered in the way that you wanted it to be answered. It reminds me of what John Claypool talks about when he talks about the ways that God works in our lives. And for those of you who don't know John Claypool, he lost a child at age eight to leukemia. And he wrote a little book, which actually are four sermons that he preached the four Sundays that he got back into the pulpit after his daughter died. And he talks about how sometimes God does work a miracle. And we have a lot of examples of that in the New Testament. Through Christ's healing of the guy by the pool, the child that was lame, the man was blind. There are many examples. So a miracle happens, and sometimes miracles do happen, but not all times. The second way that God 
works in our lives is through collaboration. So he works with the oncologist, he works with the endocrinologist, he works with the oncologist, he works with the pediatric surgeon. It's collaborative. <clears throat> it's not a miracle, but it's, it's, it's a collaboration. But then Claypool says the third way that God works in our lives is the less desired route in that he doesn't create a miracle, he doesn't collaborate, but he gives us grace which is sufficient to live our lives in faith. And it's a path that some people have a hard time accepting. And it keeps reminding me of the truth of the gospel and of faith about how important surrender is. Not my will, but your will. How important surrender is in understanding faith. Now, some of y'all probably are familiar with the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. You know those, that prayer I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. That's, that's what we attribute as the serenity prayer. But here, here's what's interesting to, my, to me about that prayer. The prayer was attributed to Reinhold Niebuhr, a theologian who wrote that in the midst of Hitler. In the midst of the evil and the uncertainty of Hitler, Niebuhr wrote those words. And if you Google the Serenity Prayer, you'll see the first four lines, which is the one that we most know about. But it, it's, there's an extended version. And the extended version, to me, I'm just dropping my paper. <laughs> the extended version, to me, is more important because if you, if, and the, the language of the extended version is that, we, that hardships are the pathway to peace. That's what Niebuhr said. I find that fascinating. Peace is not the pathway to peace. But hardships are the pathway to peace. So it brings us back to the notion of surrender and how important surrender is for the life of Christ when we think about Gethsemane and how Jesus said, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but your will be done. So that's the life of faith. And the grace of God is sufficient. The psalmist knew that. What are your thoughts this morning? The needs are many. But the grace of God is sufficient. Oh, I, I meant to tell you this. I, I was driving back from uh, South Carolina yesterday and uh, got a text I pulled off to uh, get something to eat on my way back, and the text was from one of our members and said that their neighbor just died, they're unchurched people, and the question was, do I have any wisdom? Of course, I'm, I'm at, uh, I, I forgot where I was, Chick-fil-A, I was at Chick-fil-A. I wanted to know if I had any wisdom to offer to the family I guess they expected me to do it by text. <laughs> Any wisdom for him? He wanted he wanted my wisdom, and I said, "Well, I'm I'm on my way. I'm stopped at Chick Fil A, and the best wisdom I can give you is to just listen, yes. and to listen without judgment." Yes. And. <laughs> Tell your friend that I would be glad to talk with the family at any time. And so 
it's the community. That's what, you know, think about all the people that y'all have lost this past year. Yes. I, I don't know. Does someone keep a list of? I know Ira does. Mm -hmm. Mary Lou probably does. Yeah. Mary Lou sends out so many that a lot of people say, oh, Lord, get us a text from Mary Lou. I don't want to read it. Yeah. I know it. I yeah. know it. Uh, I imagine there are 10 it's or 12, right? Seven. It's more than that, I think. Seven or eight. Yeah. At least. I think it's more than that. Well, I was keeping a list. Yeah. Well, it's a lot, isn't it? Probably yeah, a lot. Eight. Yeah. It's a lot. So, with all that's going on, it, it makes me wonder, mm -hmm. it makes me wonder, well, let me say it this way, with all that's going on, my faith and my belief is that only God can cure our country and our land. Amen. 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 Only God. Right. Only God can do that. We can. I tell you, this, this, this turmoil in Afghanistan and the chaos over there and the turmoil in our own country. There's a lot going on, isn't it? Yeah. And if you, I, I got a couple weeks ago, I said, I'm, I'm going to turn the news off for I'm yeah. going to turn the news off. Because it, it's, it seemed like the news was who, was, who had just killed who. Yeah. And uh, so it can be, it, it doesn't, it's not inspiring, is it? No. no. It's depressing. It is. It is depressing. And if you're not careful, we become like this. And that's all you can focus on. So the psalmist, the, 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 the joy and the beauty of the psalmist is that he helped the listener to worship by seeing the bigger picture. And yes, there are problems. But thanks be to God, the love of God is bigger than any of our problems. Amen? Amen. Amen. So... Or how do you psych yourself up in this job you've got? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, you've been doing it a long time, but great Scott, you just hear misery. Well, uh, Wallace, I have friends that I consult with. Ah, uh, okay. That do the same kind of work that I do. Good. And it helps. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. It helps. That way, you, and they, you know, the things they hear are the same things that I hear. Wow. I, I tell you that the. Uh, one of the sucker punches that I got a few weeks ago um, was a, a mother was nursing her baby and I, the mother was crying so much I didn't get the complete story but this is what I surmised <laughs> that the mother was nursing the, the baby her third child and she while she was nursing, she went to sleep. And you know how infants can't hold their head up? Well, the, the infant asphyxiated oh, in her arms. Oh, and so they came to me, and they have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old, two little girls. And they wanted me, they wanted to ask me how to talk with the two girls. And here's what's interesting. It's amazing. Children, Susan, you know this. Children are amazing, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> so the little boy died. And the mother, they went to the viewing. The, the open casket, you know, the caskets like this. They went to the viewing and they gave the little seven-year-old a toy to take to their little brother. And here's what the little girl said. Why would I do that? Bo has died. Now that child gets it. So they were trying to 
They were, and she's right. The little girl was right. <laughs> and so they were trying to ask me, and you know, one of the things that we tell parents, and y'all know this because y'all raised kids, is you, you, you're honest with your children. If it's suicide, you're honest with your children. Even, I've worked with families where they're not honest. And 10 years later, it's a mess. They're not, you know, the mother's, it was a suicide. And the mother meant well by not being honest. She meant, she meant well. You can understand that as a mother. You want to protect your child, right? But the truth of the matter is the dad was so depressed that he blew his brains out. It was horrific. And, and, the, and so Cheryl and I worked with the mother 10 years after the death on how to be honest with the children. So it reminds me of the mystery of God. So talking with other people is one way, and then I try to, I try to exercise even though I, I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it, but I, I try to exercise. Uh, do you understand what I mean when I say that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. I just, this morning I said, I know I'll feel better if I get up and just go for 30 minutes to the gym. I know I'll feel better. And we tell people, and I tell people this all the time, it's better to act your way into a new way of feeling than to feel your way in a new way of acting. <laughs> so I told myself that this morning, if I get up and go to the gym, I know I'll feel better. I sure don't want to go. <laughs> I'm with you. Oh, me. All right, well, let's count our blessings for the goodness of God. Let's pray together. Our Father, we're grateful to you this morning for your blessings. And I pray that we would be able to see the bigger picture. That your love is from everlasting to everlasting. And that your forgiveness as far as is the east is from the west. And you are the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. So I'm thankful today, oh God, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we thank you for your presence. We, we know that these people that we've listed on this board, as well as those that go unnamed, are in your good and faithful hands. And we as people of faith continue to trust you. And we thank you that we do not walk alone, but that your grace is sufficient. Comfort us today is our prayer today for Christ's sake. Amen.